In these videos, I'm going to show you my workflow uh, in terms of how to create 3D models using photogrammetry uh, and specifically using the software Agisoft PhotoScan. So this process has a bunch of steps and to simplify things a bit, I'm going to break it up into sort of three videos. So in this first video, I'm going to show you these steps. Um, so that's how to import photos how to import masks that we've uh, generated automatically using a batch process in Adobe Photoshop. So I have a separate uh, tutorial or set of instructions for that. Then I'm going to talk about how to divide all those photos into chunks. That means uh, separating one side from the other side in terms of when we flip them over. How to uh, align photos, that is to tell the software to figure out where all those photos were taken from, their positions, and then generating a what's known as um, a sparse point cloud. Uh, adjusting sort of the bounding box around that, um, and then finally telling it to build a dense cloud. Okay, so I'm going to open up Agisoft PhotoScan. Um, and in these tutorials, I'm specifically going to show uh, how you do these in professional version, um, as opposed to the standard edition. Uh, for these first initial steps, there isn't really uh, much of a difference, though. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is import uh, our photos. So we're going to go to Workflow and Add Folder. Uh, and in this case, I just, on the desktop, uh, have a folder with all of those um, images that I generated in Photoshop called Process, so I'm going to select that folder. Um, and then I'm going to say Create a Camera from each file and click OK. And on the right here, uh, you can see then it's going to add those photos. So while it's doing that, um, we also want to add uh, in those layer masks. So in this case, we have sort of a darker object, which is why I've used this green screen in the back. Okay, so we want to cut out as much of that green screen, so I'm going to say Tools, Import, and then Import Masks. And uh, in another tutorial um, or set of instructions for Photoshop, right, what we did was save an alpha channel. So for Method, we went from Alpha and Import Masks for, um, we right now only have one chunk, so saying Active Chunk or Entire Workspace modes won't really make a difference, but let's just go with Entire Workspace and then tell it to go. And as you can see, it's bringing in those chunks. Okay, I've skipped ahead here just for uh, the sake of your time watching this. And any second now, we're going to finish importing those masks. Okay, so then if we uh, want to see how those masks look, there's a few things we can do. First of all, we can just click uh, through our photos here, or alternatively, if we want to see just sort of a silhouette of all of those, we can click this blue button here that says Show Masks. Um, and as you can see, a lot of these are okay, but some of them we might want to sort of uh, edit them a bit more. Um, so if I go to this first one, you can see when we did that automatic batch process in Photoshop, it didn't get this bottom. Uh, we do want to mask that out, so I'm going to use this magic wand tool and then click on that green. I'm going to use the hotkeys Control, Shift, and A, then to add to that selection of mask. And just go around here, cutting those parts out. Um, you can also use this, these other selection tools, so the rectangular selection tool selects a rectangle. Um, and then the intelligent scissors will let you cut around objects, etc. Um, also, the magic wand intelligent paint, uh, rather than the magic wand, lets you select areas as well. Um, so there we go. Okay. So I'm just going to do that then uh, for the rest of these photos real quick. Okay, to start again, um, I'm still masking these, but I want to show you one more thing, and that's um, if you're using that magic wand tool and it's not really selecting uh, a large area, you can change the tolerance of that tool. That is how far away those pixels uh, can be before it will select them as part of that uh, magic wand selection. So if I click the little 
down arrow here and go to options. Um, if I want, I can up that tolerance. So there we go. Okay, so now I've gone, as you can see, uh, on the right here through those, and, you know, not all of them, um, those masks are completely perfect, uh, but basically enough is masked out that uh, we shouldn't encounter any real problems. So if I bring back up that list of steps, okay, we've imported photos, we've imported uh, and edited those, those masks, so now we're going to move these photos into two chunks. Okay, so we're going to turn this off. And what we want is one chunk uh, with all of these photos with the point facing up, and then one chunk that will consist of all of the photos of the point facing down. So I'm going to scroll here into the middle, um, and in this case I have just a photo of the background uh, delineating those two chunks already. Uh, so I can just select all of these photos in the top. I'm going to right click. Uh, on that selection and say move cameras to a new chunk and then say yes okay so now we've got this one chunk right with all of those facing down this one chunk with all of them facing up um, and then the next thing is right we don't need this photo this photo of just the background is sort of just used as a placeholder so we can uh, either disable that camera which tells the software not to use it or we can also just remove it um, if we want, since we won't need it for anything else. Okay, so now let's bring back up our list. We've moved those into chunks, and now we're going to align photos. Um, and again, what that step does is tells the software to figure out where the camera positions are and to sort of figure out uh, in the first go the general shape. Um, and in this case, I'm actually going to do what's called a batch process, which allows us to tell the software to do something to multiple chunks at the same time, or to do even multiple operations to multiple chunks at the same time. So to do that, I'm going to go uh, workflow batch process. I'm going to say add, align photos, uh, all chunks. And in terms of accuracy for this first step, uh, the medium versus high. High doesn't take that much longer, so we're going to go with that. Um, pair preselection is disabled. That's the default. Point limit is 40,000, which I just leave at the default. But we want to make sure we turn this constrained features by mask to yes. Okay, and then I also like to do this save project after each step. So if something goes wrong, our project has been saved. So I'm going to click OK. Um, and since I haven't saved the project yet, it's going to tell me to save the project. I'm just going to call this demo point and save it on the desktop. Okay, so now it's going to go through a few steps and uh, when I come back to you, we should have some preliminarily aligned photos. Alright, so it's been about five minutes um, and this aligning photos process is just wrapping up. Alright, so I'm going to close this dialog box and what do we see? We have Right, the position of all of our photos around here uh, in this kind of dome shape. Um, and I'm going to get rid of this uh, in the middle just so we can see that. Um, so that to do that, you go to View, Show, Hide Items, and Show Trackball, uh, and that's just going to let us see things a little better. Um, and then we have a point cloud. All right, so it's not perfect. We've got a few guys on the outskirts there. We can take a look at the other side. Um, but overall, right, it's looking pretty good. So what you want to do at this stage is just check to make sure that, uh, you know, these photo positions are in this, you know, basically dome shape. You don't have any off in space or any super clustered uh, together. But in this case, it's looking pretty good. So the next thing we want to do is uh, fix where this bounding box is, okay? And that's called the region. Um, to make it a little easier to see that, I'm going to turn off the showing cameras. Okay, so now we just have our point um, and all of those reference points it's found. Okay, So we want to make sure that everything uh, in here, including the scale and uh, our object, are in that bounding box. And so we're going to want to rotate that. Um, and you can use these tools up here to do that. So I'm going to say rotate region. Okay, 
Um, and then I'm going to click Resize Region, and that lets us make this guy a little bigger uh, just to fit those dimensions pretty well. Okay, looking pretty good. Um, and then at this point, if we want to, uh, we can clean up some of these stray points. Um, on this side, I don't think these are going to be a problem. They're pretty isolated. Uh, and when we do those further steps of the process, those are going to get knocked out. Um, on this side, all right, first I'm going to change that region around just so it's more or less fitting like we want it to. Um, doesn't have to be perfect. But in this case, you can see uh, on this side of the point, there's a few extra, you know, cloudiness um, going on. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that. And to do that, I'm going to use this tool, which is the Freeform Selection Tool. Um, and then just click, and you can see whatever I highlight, those points are going to turn pink. So let's go around this side of the object. And it doesn't have to be perfect here. Um, and then once those are highlighted, I can get rid of them just by pressing delete. And because they're, you know, not densely clustered, we can be, you know, pretty sure that these are the result of um, error rather than actual, um, you know, correct interpretations of the morphology of that object. So it looks like, you know, we've got most of it now. And it's nice and in our bounding box. All right, bringing up that list again. Um, so the next thing is to tell it to build a dense cloud. Um, I've already showed you how to do a batch process, but um, let's show you how to do that again. So I'm going to go uh, workflow batch process. I'm going to get rid of aligned photos because we've already done that. And I'm going to switch it to build dense cloud. So this is going to do sort of what we did in the first step, but uh, create a bunch more points. Um, so quality, I'm going to do medium for now. Um, depth filtering is, you know, how much of that noise is it trying to filter out? I'm going to leave it at aggressive, which is the default, um, and also leave reuse depth maps, maps excuse me, at no. Let's say OK. Leave, again, save project after each step and get it to think. All right, so that's it for the first video. And uh, in the next video, I'll show you how we can take uh, these models and align them together to create one complete cloud. All right, see ya.